talk a little bit about Marlon Mack and how important I think his return is. Yeah, but before you do, though, uh, while I have a moment in the action, I want to take the opportunity to wish my father, Michael Morganroth, a very happy birthday. My dad turned 79 years young today. So, Dad, if you're listening to this broadcast back home in cold Detroit, although he's supposed to be coming on Sunday when Candy and I leave town. I love you very much, and I hope you have many, many more birthdays. And, Dad, you know, without you, there wouldn't be me and Mom, for that matter. But uh, so once again, Dad, I hope you're having an awesome birthday. So Happy birthday, Mr. Morganroth. All right, go on to what you're going to talk about. So I think Marlon Mack's return, and I was reading the injury reports prior to tonight's show, and we were getting together in our pre-production meeting. He was a little limited in practice today. Right. And, it, I mean, he's coming off a broken hand. That's important, especially if you're a running back. I mean, how are you going to hold on to the ball, right? Well, I mean, that wasn't a problem, right, Lewis? Yeah, absolutely. But the biggest thing is that division is really a crapshoot right now because right. since Ryan Tannehill's taken over in Tennessee – over for Marcus Mariota, they're five and one in Tannehill's six starts. So, and then we know Derrick Henry, who Ryan discussed, has had his hamstring injury as well, along with Adam right. Thielen in Minnesota. Right. The, there's two teams in that division that I could, or three teams, honestly, I could genuinely see being as true playoff contenders. And obviously, you know, you have Deshaun Watson was with that performance on Sunday night against New England, and then you have. In Min- um, Indianapolis, who struggled the past couple of weeks, Brissett hasn't looked the same, and I would argue some of that can be attested to Max' injury. And then you have, obviously, the Titans, who have played so well since Tannehill's come on. If Max healthy, that's a big boost for that division, and I think it makes that division a lot, lot more interesting. I mean, personally, I think, in my opinion, the AFC South is one of the more balanced divisions in football. Obviously, right. Jacksonville, we're going to talk about later. Right. They have their fair share of problems and a lot of question marks surrounding them. Right. But a healthy Marlon Mack makes that division a lot more interesting. Yeah, that's true. All, all I can tell you is Ryan Tannehill was a victim of too many head coaches and offensive coordinators in Miami, number one. But he's a beneficiary, Lewis, and everybody out there listening to us here on the broadcast, that a fresh start means that you can revitalize your career. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a history lesson that's way before your time. But Jim Plunkett used to be the quarterback for the New England Patriots, and everybody thought his career went south, former Heisman Trophy winner out of Stanford. And when he went to the Oakland Raiders, he won a world championship. Mm -hmm. Go do the Google on him, you'll find out. So, Mm -hmm. And that's just one that comes off the top of my head. There's other quarterbacks and players that have gone on to fresh starts. And we're able to have fine careers. Yeah, we'll see if Cam Newton has a fresh start when he gets back, you know, w- with um, Carolina, if he's even back there next season. But I mean, well, I mean, that's a good point, though. Can't, whether he's there or not is one thing, Lewis. He's the type of guy that could benefit from a uh, fresh start somewhere else, too. So, you know, he had a good career with Carolina. Injuries certainly have curtailed that career. But, you know, I think Cam Newton has. It's far from a bust. He, you yeah. know, he's okay. I mean, you know, there's a lot of busts, but Cam Newton is not one of them. Yeah, we were discussing this when in regards to Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll. Like you said, Pete Carroll drafted Russell Wilson, right? obviously, from a Division two school. And that's kind of the same thing with Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera was the head coach when Cam Newton was drafted, so he's never played with anybody else his entire professional career. Again, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. As far as Thielen is concerned, that's... I mean, those are two, I mean, him and Dalvin Cook, those are two crucial parts to the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, we saw that they have their prolonged struggles on Monday Night Football. I mean, Kirk Cousins has won eight of those games that he's played on there. But, I mean, you know, a healthy Dalvin Cook means that you're going to have less work for Alexander Middleton, their second running back. And Middleton, though, has carried the load 4.8 yards per carry. That's, I mean, that's impressive. That's going to win you a lot of games. I mean, feeling, a healthy feeling is important to them, too, because you don't want too much work for Stephon Diggs. Okay, well, for for whatever it's worth, okay, Ron Rivera got fired, and if Cam Luton's let go, you never know. There there could be a reunion somewhere along the lines. Just saying. Yeah. You, never know. You know. You know. Nobody. There are a lot of moving parts here, and as we always talk about during the uh, off season or whatever the case may be, you just never know what's going to happen at any given time. Just something. To think it's about. never out of the question. I mean, we saw the Bears have had their problems. If Trubisky's not the guy next year, and Matt Nagy's not there. Could we see that as a possible well, reunion? I mean, right now, you said the word possibility. It's mm. possible, Lewis. Yeah. There's possibility and reality, you know, when you're talking about after the season where unless you win the Super Bowl or anywhere where you think you're close, uh, you, you have to understand. I'll give you a stat you don't know, okay, and there aren't many you don't know, but this is one, that 60% of uh, turnover. But that said, we have Damon Knight on the program, and Damon, welcome back to the Sports Exchange. How you How's doing? How's it going, Scoop? 
Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, everybody. Yep. You're welcome, welcome, Damon. Always good to have you. So give you an opportunity to talk to uh, Frozen Pond, all right, Damon? Yes, yeah, fortunately it's the Red Wings, and uh, it's not looking so good. Um, the Wings have the worst record in the NHL at 7-20-3. They're 0-8-2 in their last uh, 10 games. They rank last in goals per and against with 2.27, and they've been outscored by their opponents 28-5. to So, yeah, that, that pretty much tells what's going on in Detroit. And by the look, by the looks of it, it looks like they're going to land the first overall pick if, if this keeps up. The guy's name is Alexis Lafreniere. Uh, he's a left winger. He's 18 years old. He's from the Romowski Oceanic. Um, he won the Rookie of the Year uh, in 2017, and then he won the gold medal in Canada for the juniors in 2018. So, yeah, he's got a lot of potential and. Uh, he even had uh, 18 goals, 42 assists, and his plus minus was 22 in 29 games. So he's, you know, he's got a big upside. Okay, Lewis has a question for you. Go ahead. Yeah, Damon, I noticed that I was reading an article prior to the show when we were getting our notes together that they recently acquired yes. an Eric Cormier. I guess he was a second-round pick in 2013, yes. but he's only played in all of five NHL games in the six seasons he's been yep. in the league. Can you tell me a little bit about him? Because a lot of people are saying he could be a potential piece moving forward. Uh, yes, yes. He's a very good goalie, solid. Um, he doesn't give up a whole lot of goals. Well, I mean, he's only played five, but, you know, we got him from the Arizona Coyotes, and we traded one of our prospects uh, to him in uh, Savajari, uh, that, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And uh, so hopefully he can he can bring uh, a solid performance behind the net. And, you know, with Howard getting older, um, we need somebody for the future, and so why not him? So, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. That's a good question, Lewis. All right. Go ahead, Damon. Continue. What's going on with my Red Wings? Yeah. And so um, I looked at the history, and they picked first three times. Uh, 1964, they had Claude uh, Guthier. Uh, in 1977, it was uh, Dale McCourt and Joe Murphy in 1986. Yeah, I remember Dale so, McCourt. He wasn't a bad player, yes. actually. I like Dale McCourt. And yes. uh, Joe yep. Murphy out of Michigan State, I believe, wasn't it? I'm uh, sure. I believe so, yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure I remember yeah. Joe. Yeah. Got off to a decent career, but unfortunately, uh, issues got to him. But, so. yep. but go ahead. That's an interesting stat. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah, and, and so um, it, it's not surprising uh, that, you know, they've picked, you know, first overall in the past, you know, given the dead wings and, and, and as of late now with the, with the struggles, you know, we picked uh, six last year. We got the uh, Murray Sater and the year before that was uh, Philippe Sedina. Uh, so, you know, um, I want this pick, to be honest with you, uh, we need something to propel us for the future. And so we need to start in the draft. We got Iserman here. He's going to pick his own guys. So he's going to incorporate his vision. And so going forward, this is good for us. Well, Philip Zadina, when he was drafted, kept saying, I'm going to uh, score a lot of goals. And he definitely sold the heck out of Ken yeah. Holland thing. And I, I'm just wondering where those goals are because I, I don't yeah. think anybody's seen many of them from Philip Zadina. He said, I'm going to make everybody that passed on me regret it. Well, yes. nobody's regretting anything right now. Yeah, and you know, uh, he's only 19 years old, and so a lot of those guys are, and you got to wait for him to develop, you know what I mean? Um, they don't have uh, the natural the skill yet to play in the NHL at a elite level like, you know, uh, Crosby did or Ovechkin, you know, those guys are like once-in-a-lifetime players, and so they just got to give them time to, to produce, and they will. Um, I believe in the team. I've seen what they've done in the past, and I, they could definitely do it again. So, you know. All right, Lewis has a question yeah. for you. Go ahead, Lewis. All yeah. right, so, Damon, it's no stretch of the vernacular to say that over the last couple of years, this is a team in yeah. transition. Obviously, you know, a team not, you know, living up to the potential that they had established given their play in, you know, the last couple yeah. of decades. But, yeah. th like I said, they sold the last three trade deadlines, but with no big-name guys that are going to be free agents at the end of the season – what do you think, as a as a long time, yeah. and you too, Scott? I want your input as well. As a long long time ardent Red Wings fans, what is it that they do at the deadline, given that they don't really have any names, are going to fetch much return for them? You know what? For all I know, they may not do a whole lot, uh, unless there's a striking 
deal that makes sense so they'll let a guy go, as you know, trade deadline guy that somebody's desperate to get. I, I can't see Steve Eiser make, Eiserman making a move for the sake of doing it. You know, they, they made a couple of art-of-the-radar type deals, you know, with the Convery trade, like you were saying, and then with uh, Fabry uh, when we traded Jakob De La Rose. You know, I didn't know anything about Fabry. I didn't even know he existed in the league. And so he's turned out pretty good for us. So anything I think we do is is going to benefit us for the future. Uh, we might be stocking draft picks. You know, we still have Mike Green. He's still valuable in my eyes. We could get rid of him. Um, Trevor Daly, you really can't trade because, you know, given his age and his, his overall games that he's played in the season without injury. Right. It, you know, uh, we really don't have much. And we don't want to give up our young prospects because we don't know what we have in them. You know, we don't want to make a, a Marty LaPointe type uh, – mistake you know by trading him away and so um it's just uh, it's pick and choose you know it's 50 50 you see with the draft it's you know hit and miss so we'll see all right well i mean the red wings obviously uh you know what are they saying about jeff blashell i know that uh, the more he yeah. loses uh hotter his seat gets he yes. got about three minutes to go or so what's your summary about jeff yeah. Well, well, as you know, I, I listen to 97.1 almost every day on my way to the radio station, right. and rumors are not that great. Um, he is expected to be as early as this week to be dismissed. Um, and, you know, there's potential candidates to replace him. Dan Beltman comes up. Right. You know, and so I, I like that. You know, he was great with Pittsburgh, taking him to back-to-back Stanley Cups against us, 1-1 one, one, last one, like I was saying the other week. And so... That's a great replacement, but looking at this team, they're not ready to compete yet. And so Jeff Blashill, in my eyes, is the perfect guy to, to continue this ship and ride it out. And then when the time comes, yes, maybe move on, or if he's ready, take us to the Stanley Cup. All right, let, me, so, let, me, let me add one thing before Lewis interjects real quickly. They signed um, Dan Bilesman to like a two-year contract, sensing yes. that, that he could be a replacement at, to light a fire under him. So... Yeah, that move yeah. wouldn't surprise me. All right, go ahead, Lewis. All right, so I feel like we've already said this ad nauseum because of his recent firing. I believe he was in Toronto before. But Mike Babcock, you know, the possibility of him coming back, given that yes. you just said, Damon, they expect to fire their head coach within the next week or so. You think they go yes. interim basis and then they say after they get that first-round pick, if you know, if they do get the first overall pick, I mean, yeah. it seems just on pace for 46 points this year. Do you think Babcock is the guy moving forward? After they get that pick, they think they have an established coach, and then you want to bring in a young presence like that with that first overall pick that they're projected to have? Um, I, I don't know, because the recent stories that are coming out about him, right. about him being a bad coach, about him ripping into players in an unusual way, right. you, you know, I don't know if that's good for a, a young player coming in and for his confidence to grow. And so you don't want to destroy that confidence because it's all downhill after that. Yeah, good and point, so, too. And he had a good yeah, young nucleus yeah, out yeah. in Toronto to work with and didn't win with yeah. it. But so, so that's a good point, though, Lewis. I'm glad both of you guys are talking about it. The stories recently do become a little nervous, yeah. nerve wracking, especially when the word bullying comes into play. So, And you know what? I wouldn't write off Dan Bilesma because what you said, Damon, that the guys won a Stanley Cup before and he's from the Michigan area. I think. He, he would be more than yeah. an interim hire. I have a feeling he's the type of guy that uh, has yeah. a winning pedigree. I hate to see Jeff Flash go, but the body of work doesn't support yes. any reason to convince that he should stay. And Steve Eiserman has patience, but not that much, especially yeah. when you have more and more empty seats at LCA. So, you know, he might bring in a Tampa guy. You never know. Well, that's I'm true, familiar. too. I'm yeah. not familiar with their coaching staff, but I'm pretty sure that that would be the first place he'd look for a coach. If Bilesma isn't awarded the job full time, yes, if he is not, yes, if he's not the successor, then definitely somebody from Tampa Bay or a trustee of, you know, Steve uh, Eiserman. If I were a bet man, though, I think that Dan Bilesma would get a fair chance to, to become the permanent head coach. That's just my oh, yeah, feeling. Yeah, he's well deserving. Yeah, or, absolutely. You know, Mike Yo, I, I, I've always liked Mike Yo. You know, uh, a couple other names. You know, you got Barry Trotz, but he's not going to leave. You know, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. And so. Mike, yeah, a couple of names. I wouldn't. I, I'm not so high on Mike Yo. I, I prefer Dan Bilesma, and he's there. So, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah. You no, know, you know. So you're telling me that he could be gone as early as uh, this week. It's that hot, hot and heavy up there, huh? Yeah, yeah. But you know, with sports, you know, it's uh, it's all speculation to cause drama and viewers. So you know, I don't think that's you know solid news. But I could see it. I, I would see why not. But okay. uh, 
yeah, if you want to make a change, now's the time to do it. Very good. All right. Well, with that said, uh, well done.